What's up guys, it's Joanna here, founder and CEO of Supwell, and I'm back with another preview and market analysis video on the Nike Tempo Next Percent 2. Now, I know you guys love getting the latest details on these shoes, so I gotta feed the streets with all the leaks and latest info that we have. Let's get into it. All right, so for starters, we got some pictures that leaked recently of the Nike Tempo Next Percent 2. I'll throw it up on the screen right here. The Nike Tempo Next Percent 1 came out nearly three years ago in September 2020. When it was released by Nike, it was slotting in to replace the Pegasus Turbo, which was a super beloved shoe, as that fast daily training and up-tempo companion to the racing shoe, and specifically the Alpha Fly. Now we'll see in the Tempo Next Percent 1, there's that AirPod, that Zoom Air unit underneath the forefoot, which echoes that similar construction that we have in the Alpha Fly. When this came out, Nike was pretty innovative and they, they really pioneered this segment that we're now seeing pretty much dominate the market today. What we see Believe in the Run and others calling super trainers. The Tempo Next Percent is really the original super trainer, that companion to the Alpha Fly. Now, fast forward to 2023, we see nearly every brand coming out with something that's like the Tempo Next Percent, and this market segment is extremely crowded. So, Let's take a look at the Tempo Next Percent 2 and see what Nike's doing to change up the formula to maybe steal some of that market share back from Saucony and others who've been dominating this super trainer space. First up, what stuck out to me was the midsole. It looks like in the Tempo Next Percent 2, Nike's gonna be using a full Zoom X midsole, which is super exciting, getting that full bed of P-backs like we see in the Invincible run. In the first edition of the Tempo Next Percent, it was a dual foam midsole. We had the React, which is firmer and less responsive, mixed with the Zoom X. I personally haven't found a dual foam midsole that really does it well. I think the Mach 5 is a pretty close one that I think is executing on it well, but shoes like the Tracksmith with Elliott Runner and some others that have tested don't really do the whole dual foam midsole thing too well. So I'm really optimistic that if Nike is using that full bed of Zoom X, which from this pictures, it looks like they're doing, that this is gonna be an awesome riding shoe. It also looks like they move that four foot pod unit closer to the midfoot. And maybe this is gonna be a bit better for runners who are midfoot strikers and heel strikers to get the most benefit out of that pod. And specifically if Nike is trying to position this more as that super trainer, that everyday running option, for when you want to go uh, faster pace versus that all out speed track day or uh, affordable racer. It makes sense that they would reformulate it a bit to work better at slower paces or for runners who aren't just going to be up on their toes all the time using this. Now, I'll be interested to see as well if they've made any changes to that Zoom Air unit. It's interesting because Nike just calls these Air units the same thing across all of their shoes, but I'm sure they make slight changes and I've also read that they make slight changes to how they tune them, the compression, the air, which gives a different riding experience underfoot based on all of those factors. Midsole also looks like there's a pretty substantial stack of that Zoom X underfoot. I'm wondering if they've made any changes to the height and the heel. This is actually an illegal shoe. That heel stack is 46 millimeters, which is above that 40 millimeter limit set by World Athletics and the Tempo Next Percent 1. It also has a 36 millimeter forefoot for a 10 millimeter drop. So I'll be interested to see if they've raised it, lowered it. You know, we have shoes like the Super Blast who are going with that same 45, 46 millimeter heel. So We'll, we'll see what Nike does with the Tempo Next Percent 2, whether they're gonna make this a legal shoe or leave it as that illegal daily training and up-tempo option. I'm moving to the upper real quick. This upper looks like one of the best that I've seen recently. It has this booty construction, almost like a trail shoe, like what we're seeing on the Saucony Endorphin Rift, which came out recently. It's that sock-like fit, and it looks to be super soft, that fly knit type of material. And one thing is with the lacing too, it doesn't look like they put any of their weird gimmicky wires or any of that type of tech in there. It just looks like normal lacing, which should be good. I think for these types of up-tempo shoes and budget racers, etc., I like having just a clean normal lacing system nothing too complicated going on just makes it easy to cinch them down and I think with the laces that they picked for these as well it looks like they shouldn't be too lace bitey on the tempo next percent too 
All right, moving down to the outsole. Now the Tempo Next% Percent 1 is a super durable shoe because it does have a pretty generous covering of that rubber on the outsole. Looks like they're even enhancing that with the Tempo Next% Percent 2. From this picture that leaked, we can see that it looks like the entire bottom frame of that shoe is covered with rubber. The Tempo Next% Percent 1 had a little gap in the midfoot, but it seems like Nike is positioning the Tempo Next% Percent 2 as more of that midfoot striking shoe. And so they're gonna be covering that midfoot area with more rubber so there's none of that gap between the pods and the rear area and I know some runners especially those midfoot strikers don't like the the dual piece midsoles where you see the front is covered and the back is covered and it's separated and instead prefer to have one contiguous long platform so I think you'll be super happy with the tempo next percent too if that's you now Nike does not have the best track record when it comes to weight outside of the Vaporfly, which is one of the lightest racing shoes out there. If you look at the original Tempo Next Percent, it weighs 8.9 ounces, which isn't super heavy, but if we compare it to shoes that have come out more recently, like the Saucony Endorphin Speed 3, that weighs in at 8.1 ounces. The Asics Magic Speed 3, that's super light at 7.7 .7 ounces. So if Nike wants to be competitive with the Tempo Next Percent 2, I'm hoping that they can lower the weight on this to sub eight ounces for that sample size US men's nine. But like I said, Nike doesn't have the best tracker, track record with this. They've actually uh, increased the weight on shoes like Pegasus and zoom flies and others as they've gone through the iteration so also with this having that full covering of rubber on the bottom I'm not feeling the most optimistic about what they've done with the weight all right now I wanted to touch on the market as a whole for these types of trainers and where I think Nike is going with this Tempo Next% Percent 2. Like I mentioned in the beginning, Nike pioneered this super trainer segment, this training companion segment with the Tempo Next% Percent 1. And with this being in the market for nearly three years without another version, that is a super long development cycle. Nike does this a little bit. We can see with the Vaporfly and Alphafly because they have two top tier racing shoes, they also let those sit out for two years individually and will alternate each year. They'll do the Vaporfly and then the Alphafly so they do two year cycles with their top tier shoes. That's not really that common. And I think it's because Nike as that number one premium name in performance running can get a bit comfortable with their position. But over the past few years, we've seen Saucony drop in heat with the Endorphin line. We've seen Asics over the past 18 months just come crashing in with the Nova Blast, which is stealing share from the Pegasus, dropping the Super Blast, which created a new market segment, and dropping the Asics Magic Speed 3, which is just solidifying that Super Trainer segment. Nike cannot be stagnant. Nike cannot just rest on what they've done on the past with the Tempo Next Percent 2. They really need to deliver a solid product here in order to steal back some of that that share and to reclaim their position as number one outside of just those excellent race day shoes. And I know we have those Nike fans who will buy anything. I used to be like that when I first started running, you know, I just go Nike or Adidas, but as runners get more sophisticated and as we see brands like Asics and Saucony up their cool factor a little bit, for example, Asics putting out that all white version of the Gel Nimbus 25 with the gum sole and Saucony just consistently dropping heat on their performance line with the Endorphin series. And we even see brands like on and hoka have captured some of that cool factor from nike especially in the suburbs and college campuses you see hoka everywhere you see on everywhere on the feet of moms in the coffee shops it's not just oh i'm gonna go grab that nike because they represent athletics to me nike can't just coast by on that brand loyalty anymore you know this is a really competitive space we've seen more runners get into the performance running space over the past few years as a hobby and with that being said it's not just like oh we're nike we have we have jordan we have etc we have all these sponsored athletes Consumers are more sophisticated, more intelligent than ever, and we're gonna go where the best products are. And over the past few years, that's been Asics, that's been Saucony. It still is Nike for those race day shoes with the Vaporfly and the Alpha Fly, but brands are even catching up there. Nike's even been pretty stagnant with the Pegasus, right? They dropped the Pegasus 40, the fourth decade of that awesome line of shoes, and they didn't really do much to it. It's kind of stagnating and keeping in the same spot that it's been. They're not really pushing that forward. I would love to see Nike drop a banger in this tempo next percent too. I think it has 
all the ingredients to really push things forward and be that new super trainer to come out in the market. And I'm really rooting for Nike on this one. All right, guys, so there we have it. That is the preview and market analysis of the Nike Tempo Next% 2. Let me know in the comments what you think about the shoe. Are you excited for it? What do you think some of the changes are that they're gonna do with this model? And thank you for liking, subscribing. I'll make sure to keep you up to date on all the latest in the world of performance running.